remember I said there's this double barrel question, right? Locate the station points and then determine their nature, right? Locate, you've already been doing this, right? If I gave you a function, let's do this right now, okay? Example. Okay? We're just going to choose this example because it's, it's so easy and you can do it without thinking. If I said to you, <coughs> excuse me, locate the stationary points and determine their nature. Here's the way I would do it. The stationary point, by definition, is where f dash, the derivative, is zero. Right? Does that make sense? So first, I'd better get f dash. What is f dash? 2x plus 5. 5. Good. Okay, there you go. I would say my next line for stationary points, and I'm going to let you use the, um, the abbreviation there. I've been doing mathematics for a while. At least in the mathematics you guys are going to be learning, SP doesn't re really ever stand for anything. So for stationary points, f dash x equals 0. We've talked about the importance of these intermediate lines, like a line like this. Don't just jump straight to the next thing. I highly discourage that. i.e. 2x plus 5, that's f dash, equals 0. And of course you're getting the answer you expect because you know where the roots are, negative 2, negative 3, and that's smack bang between them. Okay? I found an x coordinate, but a point has two coordinates. So what am I going to do now? Sub it back in. I'm going to sub it back in. I'm going to say f of negative 2 and a half equals negative a quarter, because I just happen to know what that value is. Right? So now I've got an x, and I have its corresponding coordinate. I would say, therefore, there's a stationary point right there. <clears throat> right? Now, I have not determined its nature yet. <coughs> Excuse me. To determine the nature, what you really want to pay attention to is all this green business. Right? That's why I'm trying to draw your attention to it. In what way does the gradient change on either side, right? Is it going from negative to positive, or positive to negative, or is its sign staying the same on both sides, okay? So we're going to draw up, and there are other methods you'll learn to do this later on, but for now, we're gonna draw up a table of values for our green derivative, right, like so. Now remember, I'm trying to see what happens before, what happens after, because that's really what's going on. If I don't have a picture, if I knew it went negative, zero, positive, I could say it's a minimum. If I knew it went positive, zero, negative, I'd know it's a maximum. Okay? So I want to pick, well I know what's going to happen at two and a half, or negative two and a half. I know what the gradient is, that's fine. Then I just want to pick a point on the left and a point on the right. Okay? Now, I'll, I'll write some principles for how you choose this in a second, but for now, I think these numbers will suffice. Okay, let's test it and then let's talk about how you choose these numbers. Because I just kind of pulled them out of random, right? Uh, here is f dash, right? So what's f dash of negative 3? Negative 1. Minus 6 plus 5. I do that. f dash of negative 2 is minus 4 plus 5, which is one. positive 1. Okay. So now when I look at this, and this is literally what I do, right? I say, look, my gradient transitions from negative to zero to positive, right? Negative means I'm decreasing. Zero means there's a stationary point. And then positive means I'm going up. What does that shape look like? That's a minimum, isn't it? It's a minimum because, of course, it's just this parabola, right? So I would say, off the basis of this table, therefore, negative two and a half negative a quarter is a minimum turning point. That's the kind of turning point it is. Okay, question. Um, I've seen people do like the stuff with just an, like, you know, they sub in like three into your f dash of x and they realize it's like a negative, then they just put a negative in the box mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, they realize that the f, the, uh, for minus two is a positive, so there's a plus in the box. Would you prefer us to write a um, a value in there, mm -hmm. or would you prefer us to write like a symbol just to get the shape? That's a great question. Okay, just in case you are not quite following with what I was talking about, um, this is what he means. Um, <clears throat> people say, okay, negative two and a half. I know because I found the stationary point, so I know what that is. That's fine. Okay, and then they say, oh, okay, you know, you've got a really simple derivative here. 
frequently the derivative is not nearly as simple and it's like some real effort to actually work out what these values are. But when you start putting in numbers, you're like, oh, oh, it's, it's, it's clearly going to be negative and they do this, right? And then they have a look at the other one and it's a bit of a mess, but they've gone far enough either in their calculator or in their brain that they say, yeah, it's positive. Okay, so sometimes people do this and you should never, ever, ever do this, okay? Now, let's just talk about why for a second. Um, I know why people do it. I, I told you the reason why. It's because computing this is sometimes, it's actually work, okay? Wow, surprise, surprise, people are avoiding work. Now, why is this a problem, okay? The reason why is because frequently, see how I said locate station points determine their nature, okay? Um, in order to work out what's really going on, Questions frequently already know what the nature of the station point will be. Okay? Remember I talked about optimization? I want a bigger one, I want a smaller one. Okay? So you kind of are expecting, you know, I might know, like even before I've even touched the question, I'm expecting a minimum, right? And you can just read that off the question. The question might even say, locate the stationary points and prove that blah 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 is a minimum turning point. Okay? So the question already tells you this is what's coming. Right? Now, by doing this, what have I demonstrated? What understanding have I demonstrated? No. And the answer is no. Like I've shown I could read the question, but I haven't actually been able to work with it. Okay? As a result, this number and this number are critically important. It has to be a number. Okay? And that is like the fastest way to lose one mark off of your derivative. Yeah. Oh, if you put the number and then at the bottom, there are those three lines. You yeah. Put the negative and the positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think if we were to do like okay, negative, uh, zero, and positive, that's that's fair game. That's fair game. I will tell you the reason why most people do those lines um, for a couple of reasons. Number one. It helps you remember, it helps you ground yourself in the fact that what does negative mean again? Oh yeah, it's going down, it's decreasing, right? So it attaches you back to this geometric meaning here, which is good, right? And then once you see that, oh, it's obvious, right? If you saw something else, like say it's positive, then it's zero, and then it's positive again. Like the picture itself tells you what you're looking at. It's an enormously helpful tool. Um, I think this is fine. Um, I can write this and I, like, I, I can't help but see this when I see that. But at least when I started, this was really useful to me. So it's all fine. Um, the most important part is the numbers. <laughs>